So what's going on guys, it's JM at Speedboxing. Make sure you subscribe to my channel before you click onto any of my videos. Also comment below in the comment section if you guys have any opinions and what I'm saying in any of my videos. Really helps me out if you guys could drop me a sub or two on my channel. Like always, it is appreciated. So, Cali Sowland of Sowland Events and the promoter of IBF number one mandatory to the heavyweight title, Kubrat Pulev says that his fighter will probably get the Anthony Joshua fight next and he'll be very surprised if he doesn't. He doesn't see Anthony Joshua vacating the IBF title. And this is a fight that's probably the most realistic for Anthony Joshua next. That's what I've been hearing a lot of. Unless Vladimir Klitschko exercises his rematch clause because he does have a rematch clause. Vladimir Klitschko, if he was defeated by Joshua, which he was. And it's weird for a challenger to have a rematch clause in the contract but Vladimir Klitschko had one he managed to get that into his contract for the Joshua fight and Joshua agreed to it but I don't see Vladimir Klitschko coming back this year if he does fight Joshua again and decides to exercise that rematch clause then I see that being in 2018 and I would like to see that fight again because the Anthony Joshua Vladimir Klitschko fight will probably go down now as an all-time classic because that fight definitely lived up to the hype of what was surrounding the fight and Joshua also has another mandatory in Luis Ortiz, but he may vacate his WBA title because Eddie Hearn and the WBA already asked Luis Ortiz for a favour to say let Anthony Joshua fight Klitschko for the WBA title and you'll get the winner of that fight. But if Anthony Joshua doesn't commit to that, then I see the WBA stripping Anthony Joshua and giving Luis Ortiz the title or letting him fight for the title. But I see Pulev getting the fight over Ortiz. Ortiz is less, well, he's more dangerous than Kubat Pulev. Kubat Pulev is a good fighter. He's a very good boxer in the heavyweight division. He's not the biggest puncher, but he does pop a little bit. Kubat Pulev, but he's not too dangerous when it comes to punching power. He's got a very good jab, though, Kubat Pulev. And the only blemish on his record was when he fought Vladimir Klitschko in 2014. And he did manage to hurt Vladimir Klitschko early on in that fight. He seemed to stun Klitschko. But after Klitschko seemed to take Kubat Pulev's best, he thought, well, if that's the best he's got, then I'm not really going to show too much respect for his power. I felt it. He didn't really take me off my feet. So that's what Vladimir Klitschko did. He came out very aggressive and stopped Kubat Pulev in five rounds, knocked him out. It was actually a very good win for Vladimir Klitschko. And... To quote Kali Sowland, the promoter of Kubrat Pulev, he says, I would be disappointed and I don't expect him to vacate, to be honest. I think Anthony Joshua is a guy who has built himself very much on being a very good sportsman and he rises to every challenge. It's also the first belt that he won as a pro and those are normally the belts that you don't let go of. I would be very, very surprised if he didn't fight Pulev. Untimely, the IBF will always decide themselves and they are not like some federations where you can make step aside deals as it's called in boxing, where you're paid money to step aside. That's just simply not possible with the IBF. We all know the IBF are a very strict organisation. We saw it when Tyson Fury won the IBF heavyweight title when he beat Klitschko. They stripped him within nine days because he couldn't fight Glaskov, who was the mandatory for the IBF title, because he just couldn't, because he had that rematch clause cemented with Vladimir Klitschko. Anyway, so we have to find a solution where we have a certain degree of security where the people who are fighting for the world title if the request was to have the, that rematch then obviously both guys would have to sign something to agree to fight Pulev on certain terms and conditions I see Anthony Joshua fighting Kubrat Pulev in October I don't see Klitschko coming back this year even if he does feel like he wants the rematch of Anthony Joshua like the fight's still fresh we'll see how Vladimir Klitschko is going to feel in a couple of weeks he might think, now nah, I might need time to recover from this because that was a big loss and a long, hard fight. Or he might just think, you know what, I nearly had Anthony Joshua out of there. I can go again for October or November. But I see the Kubrat Pulev, Pulev fight happening if the Klitschko fight doesn't happen. I don't see John A. Wild or Tyson Fury getting the Anthony Joshua fight this year. I see that happening in 2018. So... Yeah, comment below your opinion on this. It's JM.